Welcome, welcome everyone to another episode of the Houston Texans franchise. Today, after a really good draft, we're heading into the next season, hopefully with another division title and another playoff appearance. This is the Wabegong. Let's get it started. So I made a few moves uh, off camera. I released Tyler Huntley. He was not playing good at all for us, mainly due to his uh, bad intelligence. Uh, so not a good quarterback. I hope for a little bit more due to his speed. But yeah, that was nothing. So he's not part of our Texans franchise anymore. But I've signed Douglas Nelms, uh, former second round pick. I played for the Vikings, um, not really good at all, was a purely backup and is also going to be our backup. I liked his intelligence, accuracy could be better, but yeah, uh, he's a rental for one year, very cheap. Uh, let's see, and hopefully he does not need to play any games. Let's hope that Everson uh, can stay healthy and especially uh, play good and be our QB1 for the future. Other than that, I also signed backups for defensive tackle and free safety. And that mainly because I traded Gary Fisk. You remember former third round pick was a starter for us for one year after we drafted a very good other free safety. So after that, he was only backup. And now with his contract running out, I thought we could just get a little bit out of it. And yeah actually got the second round pick from the Bills, also trading away our fourth, uh, fifth round selection that we got from the Cowboys. And in addition to that, I signed Andy Conger, undrafted free agent. I liked his athletic profile uh, with agility, speed could be better, but yeah, for an undrafted free agent, I signed him actually to a long-term seven-year contract, very, very cheap, only 20 years old. Let's see if he can get up uh, this player skills and yeah, should be a backup for us, nothing more. Um, but yeah, that should be the team. I already went through preseason. We won all three games and I already went through training camp. And if we have a look at the Texans, we see that Vernon Lawrence made an incredible gain here. Uh, plus 14, so he's up to an 87 overall. So finally we uh, get a little bit uh, from that and it seems like he's developing into the first round pick we hoped him to be. So now I think we have a really cool tackle duo with Mackay Becton and Vernon Lawrence and I hope he plays uh, at his 87. In the last few years, uh, we are few sacks allowed but I th I think there's still much more potential decent pass and run blocking so really happy to see that a uh, conger the undrafted free agent made also a little bit of progress um, and Noberto Everson plus five so he's now uh, still at an 83 I think that was also his previous overall but yeah the stats are coming along especially the accuracy and this is the year where we uh, could evaluate him once again. Still only 23 year old. Uh, three years left on his contract. Um, but yeah, the last season was his best by far. Over 4,000 passing yards and 34 uh, touchdowns. Also the highest in interception. But other than that, uh, highest um, completion percentage and overall the best season for him was also healthy most of the time and so that's really nice to see uh, bumped up his touchdown percentage and hopefully we are, can build up on that especially with our new weapon on wide receiver Mark De Silva and other than that nothing that really stands out uh, Jakey Scott is someone uh, we need to replace after the season punter and Rodrigo Blankenship also dropped in overall. Um, but yeah, we have another kicker and I think it could be finally time to start him. Speaking of starts, uh, let's look 
at the current death chart, um, not too much changing there, except from a new backup QB. Running back still the same. Uh, Kenny Porterfield playing on an extending contract. So let's see if we can bring him back. On wide receiver, Mark De Silva, our new number one, with Jeffrey Hand and James Wu playing behind him. And both of them had really good last year. Jeffrey Hand last year in his rookie season, nine touchdowns, 1,200 yards. So if this is something we can get from wide receiver number two, I'm so excited what this offense can bring. And James Wu also extending contract, uh, hoping to bring him back, especially with the speed and also 10 touchdowns last year. So also uh, he played incredible, nearly 1,000 yards and good three seasons for us. I want to keep him long term, but yeah, he's going to be expensive. Tight end, no changes and on the line. We have Mackay Becton uh, on left tackle, Vernon Lawrence now right tackle. Really happy with that. Center is still the same and our guards also changed. Jan Cole we brought in in free agency and Peter Chamberlain in the draft, um, deciding to playing him over Darien Kennard, who earns 8 million per year, something like that. So way too much for a backup. But I want to see Peter Chamberlain develop and hopefully he can improve this O-line defensively. Uh, not really anything noteworthy. Johnny Rapp, our second round pick, I think, if I'm not mistaken, or early third round, playing back up uh, behind Hamilton, Ivory and Edmonds. On cornerback, I was not able to bring back uh, Sauce Gardner. Another team signed him. So Michael Johnson uh, already steps into the Nickelback 1 role. Let's see if he is good enough for that. Uh, quite the athlete with his speed. Um, but other than that, yeah, let's see what he can bring to the table. He's also going to be my starting punt and kick returner. So maybe he can bring a little bit more than I uh, initially thought after drafting him way too high. But yeah, he's our cornerback number three and John Caldwell playing behind uh, as a backup. So let's try if Michael Johnson works out. Kevin Driscoll starting free safety. Nothing's changing there. And Terrell Edmonds is in his uh, last contract year for us. I'm not planning to bring him back. I think Harry Mackey could be his replacement or we draft someone or sign someone next year. Um, but yeah, I decided to... Uh, for package number two, play Harry Mackey here to give him at least some starts. Uh, so excited to see how this is going to turn out. And then let's head into the season. So week one against the Broncos and whoa, we crushed them. 30 to no. Wow, uh, I was not expecting that incredible performance. Not necessarily by Everson, but decent enough. James Robinson had a great game. And nothing yet from our rookie wide receiver. Is he injured? I'm not sure where the silver is, but not his best game. Derek Stingley, one interception. Brian Burns, one sack. So no big stats here. One forced fumble. No big stats, but... Yeah, I I take I take this win. Let's see if uh, he's injured. I cannot see that yet. Uh, one I need to sim the whole week. I accidentally clicked only on the game, so let's sim the week and see if also uh, someone already signed here. Uh, Mark the silver questionable, so not the best start for him. And also no one who signed. James Wu not happy with the contact uh, contract. Reginald Alston thinking about that. And Porterfield also not happy. They're going to be so expensive. I don't know. I really want to keep Kenny Porterfield. He's a great, great addition to James Robinson. But not sure if he is worth that amount of money. I'm not paying 8 million for 
for the second running back. So as hard as it is, let's maybe let's maybe try six eight again uh, for four years. But I guess we need to try to sign him in free agency or just let him go. And James Wu. So 76 overall is not the best. And then paying him 11 million per year. Well, let's backload that to some degree and hope that he improves to really earn that and make him a... Yeah, rotational is fine, I guess. But yeah, decent start to the new season. Uh, hopefully Mark De Silva can uh, come back soon. And then let's see that we win against the Bengals. Yes, we do so by 10 points. Everson, once again, no interception. That's really cool. Loper is uh, stepping up in the absence of Porterfield and that could be also a long-term solution. So similar overall in speed than Kenny Porterfield. Maybe he really is our long-term solution since being on the team long-term. So let's see about that. Uh, the Silva not yet back. Uh, also no really notable performances. Kyle Pitts also... Not really. Uh, defensively, Eaton is, uh, by the way, having a really good uh, start to the season. He's our new kicker that I signed two seasons ago and with one million per year. Uh, let him uh, sit for one year, but now this, this year is, uh, besides a 42 49. Going quite all right so far. But yeah, I wanted to check out the defensive side of the ball. Two interceptions and also some sacks. Bradley Ivory, Brian Burns and Tabor, our new defensive tackle. Oh, he already played for one year, but not a big role. Uh, so that's, that's nice to see. Still waiting for the sack number on Brian Burns and Aiden Hutchinson. The silver still questionable. And Reginald Austin signed. So only James Wu, uh, who we need to bring back. Kenny Porterfield. Yeah, uh, not, not really planning to do that if he does not sign uh, this offer. So week three against the Indianapolis Colts, they're 0 and 2. We're 2 and 0, and we're losing our first game. Wow! Wow! Everson four interceptions. That's horrible. That is really horrible. Such a good start to the year, but now four interceptions in one game. So he just lost us the game. The Silva directly stepping in with a touchdown. Same for Kyle Pitts, so that's nice. And on the defensive side, still not the sack numbers that I hoped for. Aiden Hutchinson also not doing anything so far. This is so sad. Um, maybe thinking about trading him after the year. He's just not putting up the numbers that I hoped for. It's really, really annoying uh, at this point the defensive line is really not performing up to the standard that i expect them to be uh, james Wu not signing and porterfield is furious i'm also furious so we're going to let him work and maybe sign him again still potential other free agents terrell Edmonds. i don't want to bring back james Wu. we're planning to the rest are just backups so James Wu, only priority so far to re-sign him. Let's play against the Jaguars. And we're back on the winning side. Now only one interception for Everson. Robinson and Loper both playing well. And I think I'm going to change the death chart and making Loper running back number two. He's just playing so good. Last year in the playoffs, he was also quite all right. And... This year he's putting up touchdowns, so he's our long-term solution. 
as much as I like Kenny Porterfield. The Silver, not the best game, unfortunately. Brevin Jordan and Hand uh, stepping up with touchdowns. And first sack for Aiden Hutchinson. I don't think that we can get a two-digit sack number from any of those players, sadly. But it is what it is at this point. Maybe thinking about upgrading the D-line. Next year, James Wu still not willing to... Uh, sign so let me quickly go into the death chart and change running backs here so Michael Looper package number one and package number two let's play Michael Looper here and Kenny Porterfield there let's see if he can be a uh, running back number one uh, for us Week 5, 3-1 and one against the uh, 3-1 and one Chicago Bears. And we're winning again. So good start to the year. Dak Prescott playing quarterback for them. Everson again with a good game. Hopefully he's not injured. I'm always anxious when the backup QB comes in for a few plays. But does not seem to be the case. And he's improving, right? I think he started with an 83 overall. So maybe he got better in his player skill. Not sure because accuracy is not changing. I'm not changing. Intelligence, I'm not sure. But yeah, maybe he starts to play like a first overall pick now. And other than that, uh, yeah, the silver not yet what I hoped him for to be. Still injured to some degree. And on the defensive side, two sacks by Brian Burns, one by Aiden Hutchinson. Please continue doing that. Looking great after just uh, five games. James Wu wants more money. Doing that in a second. Just quickly uh, checking out the standings. We're on top of the AFC South together with the Tennessee Titans. So... One of the better teams now in the AFC. Um, James Wu wanted to have more money. Let's do that. Also not afraid to let him walk and sign him in free agency. Maybe 12 million is a lot. But I really liked him from day one. With his speed, I really like uh, speed for wide receivers here in the game. Not sure how this actually translates. I uh, haven't tested out in detail, but I always like to draft uh, fast uh, wide receivers. Now week six. We win against the Green Bay Packers. Are now five and one. Two interceptions, but also four touchdowns. Two of them to Jeffrey Hand. The Silver with quite some yards, but no touchdowns. Um, Pitts also not really stepping up. So right now, it's our former first round pick, Jeffrey Hands. Four touchdowns on the year. Yeah, coming, coming together the team, uh, especially on the offensive side. And defensively, only one sack by our free safety. Hutchinson, good in run stopping, but not so much on sack so far. Maybe that's also his role in the NFL, more run stopping. Ah, I don't think so. But let's see uh, how, how he's going to be in real life for the Detroit Lions. Also really nice that we have Derek Stingley, who also ended up being a part of the Texans team now. He is 90 overall, so by far our best cornerback. And I think also one of the better case scenarios uh, he is going to be. Uh, thankfully, no injuries for us. Let's hope that this is also going to be the case in reality. Interception number is fine, or can be better, but I think he's doing a great job for us so far with uh, locking down and... Uh, yeah, leading our defense here. Now after six games, only one loss. Really happy with that. Uh, not happy with James Wu, of course. 
think maybe final offer. Maybe we can get him cheaper in free agency. It's always a risk, right? So other teams might be also willing to offer him that amount of money. But on the other hand, you can also make some, some bargain moves in free agency. Not often, but at least uh, sometimes. Let's check out how we're doing uh, compared uh, with total stats. Quite all right, actually. Uh, focusing on the passing game, not the best regarding rushing. That's fine, since I wanted to have a passing first offense uh, with Noberto Everson putting the focus on him. And he seems to deliver so far, also with yards per game and uh, points per game. Uh, top five, that's awesome. And also defense is playing really good, better than I <laughs> expected from the numbers of interception and sacks. Pass defense, top 10, rush defense, even top three. That's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with the team is coming along. Uh, not happy with uh, some stats, of course. <laughs> but yeah, not everything is about uh, getting uh, to the quarterback and uh, sacking him. Now, bye week. And after the bye week, we're playing... Week 8 against the Carolina Panthers. And we lose. And we lose by far. And another 4 interceptions for Everson. He's not really making it easy for me to keep him long term. I don't know why he's having that many interceptions. He's now at 11 only after seven games, after having eight interceptions in two games. I don't know what the problem is, to be honest. Maybe the intelligence, but 80 is also not bad and his accuracy is awesome. Let's check out the analysis. Where are the interceptions coming from? And he throws over the middle and that's what I don't understand. Our focus and strategy, I, I put him to throw over the middle. And as you can see, he's not really trying to hit uh, the deep part of the field. So mainly focusing on uh, the middle and short passes. Actually has a good uh, completion percentage downfield. But yeah, most interceptions really coming on those short passes. I, I don't really get that. Uh, but yeah, nothing we can change here. Let's see if James Wu signed. No, he's not. So let's yeah leave him to free agency and then maybe sign him in free agency. It's risky, but I'm not really willing to pay him 12 million at that point. Now, New York Jets... And we win Everson now with a little bit better game. Yes, no interceptions, so pretty up and down for him. Rushing is really not looking good. Yeah, not our focus, uh, of course. The Silva, awesome in yards, not so awesome in touchdowns, but that's more for the tight ends. Uh, but also, no, Kyle Pitts, no touchdown, but Brevin Jordan has. And yeah, regarding sex, still not too good, but the defense seems to be all right. So not allowing too many points. And in the end, it's not really about the total stats. Uh, it's, it's more than that. And I think our defense is pretty good in the intangibles. So let's uh, keep that up. Next game against the Buffalo Bills, who are 7-2. So if we would win that, that could help us for maybe getting our first bye week uh, of the rebuild. Wow, we win. That's awesome. By one touchdown and Everson also a game without that many mistakes. This time we have more touchdowns uh, on the rushing part of the game, but more than 300 yards. That's cool. Also the percentage, uh, passing percentage is awesome. Uh, 
De Silva leading the team once again in yards, but not in touchdowns. So that's something he could improve. But yeah, it's his rookie year. He's 20 years old. So I think we're going to have him for at least 10 years. Uh, no total stats uh, really for the defense, but it's working. So I trust our defensive coordinator by now. It seems like that uh, he knows what he's doing. It's working uh, pretty, pretty good so far. And regarding standings, we are on top of our division seven and two, also on top of the AFC. Only the Dallas Cowboys better overall, but uh, if the season would end right now, we would have the bye week. But <laughs> I'm not saying that again after seeing what... Uh, happened last year uh, at the final games so now against the Colts please win and we do so and we crush them once again only allowing seven points and putting up 45 Everson awesome game really awesome in terms of percentage yards and touchdowns and this time the Silva also with the touchdown is this his first second yeah second so that could be better, but on pace for more than... Oh no, he was injured the first few games, so quite shy of a thousand yards, I guess. But yes, I think he would be more suited for a quarterback with a stronger arm. But <laughs> yes, still not 100% convinced that Everson is our long-term starter. Kyle Pitts is not playing a good season at all. Only two touchdowns so far. And also in terms of yards, could be better. No injuries. Uh, that's That's cool. So let's directly play against the Detroit Lions. And we win another one. We're now 9-2. and two. Really happy with the team. And it seems like Everson is injured. Yes, for one or two weeks. Ah, that's, that's sad. But he's really improving his overall. Now also getting up the arm by one point and accuracy. So maybe we're at the point now where he is improving. Sad to see him out uh, for one or two weeks. The Silver with another touchdown. And also three sacks. And now really curious what our backup quarterback is able to do. As I said, I was not hoping to see him at all. But, yeah, we need to deal with that. So let's see if we can win with our backup quarterback against the Patriots. And no, we lose. It's sad to see injuries being the reason for us to not performing that well. Kenny Porterfield with a touchdown. Ah, that's, that's sad. Not a good game. And it seems like once again, the last few games of the year are costing us big time. Now against the Dolphins, hopefully we can win again. Yes, just barely our backup quarterback. Decent game, so no interceptions. Completion percentage could be better, but yeah, James Wu with the touchdown. He's also not playing too well this year. Yes, <laughs> nearly or just over 500 yards, only two touchdowns. But that's also because of the silver. So we cannot play with uh, five uh, wide receivers, uh, unfortunately. Defense, total stats... Yeah, don't even bother looking at them. Injuries probable for Noberto Everson, so he's going to play 
And other than that, they're not happy with the playing time. Well, be happy to be a part of the Houston Texans rebuild. And now in week 15, let's quickly check out the dashboard again. I dropped a little bit of uh, in terms of uh, total points per game, rushing not uh, coming along. So rushing best defense, uh, yeah, Aiden Hutchinson, at least in our career, seems to be a pure run stopper. Brian Burns with nine sacks, so didn't notice that. So every now and then it seems to work now week 15 against the Tennessee Titans. And we win and once again, really good game by Noberto Everson, and that's what I like to see. Four touchdowns by him. Also Nelms with two touchdowns. Good, good backup quarterback. Hopefully Everson is not injured. Yes. He is fit, so just Nelms playing randomly. The silver great game. Kyle Pitts finally with a 100-yard plus game. One touchdown. And Jeffrey Hand, three touchdowns. He is just amazing. Good first round pick. Also nine touchdowns last year, nine touchdowns this year. I'm really excited for the future. Jeffrey Hand is, is a great wide receiver too. And Mark De Silva, our wide receiver number one. I think they're a great duo. Also with Kyle Pitts on tight end, our offense is just loaded. And defense Brian Burns finally with more than 10 sacks on the year. So at least one of those two edge rushers uh, is performing to his standards. No injuries. Then let's directly go into the next game against the Minnesota Vikings. We're 11 and 3. And after this game... We're winning again, just barely by two points. Uh, Everson, good game. That's what I'm saying for most of them, except from those two games with four interceptions. Maybe he really is uh, QB1 for us. Kyle Pitts now really improving for the last uh, part of the season. Bradley Avery with the sack. So linebackers also quite all right. And... Just quickly checking the standings again. With two games uh, left to play, we're leading uh, the AFC South and we're on a uh, tie with the Cincinnati Bengals for the bye week. So hopefully uh, we can achieve our very, very first bye week. Well, now I jinxed it once again. <laughs> oh, please not. But looking at uh, the playoff standings, we would be actually before the Cincinnati, in front of the Cincinnati Bengals. But they're on a big, big winning streak. Let's see. We are playing the Jacksonville Jaguars. And we lost. Oh, no. <laughs> ah, that's, that's really unlucky. Uh, just barely... Yeah, not, not really the stats this time. And the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, they won by one point, so I think that's it. We're in the playoffs, but uh, no bye week. Last game of the year. We are playing the Tennessee Titans. Can we win... The very final game of the year. Yes, we do so. And the Bengals, unfortunately, won as well. So we're second in the playoff picture. Awesome season. And Everson ends it strong. Five touchdowns. Nearly 90% uh, completion percentage. And that is what I hope for, for him. The Silva, two touchdowns. So also finishing strong here. And defensively. Few interceptions, so three. That's that's really nice to see. But yeah, Everson, good game, nearly or good season, nearly four thousand yards, uh, thirty touchdowns, so a little bit worse than last year. 
And if you ignore the two games with eight interceptions, he only had uh, three interceptions in 13 games. That's uh, that's really outstanding. Best uh, QB rating so far of his career. Looking at the analytics. Yeah, maybe let's try to uh, throw, uh, help him to throw the ball deep. It seems to work at least here. Not too many attempts. Most of his attempts, really short and medium passing game, worked quite all right, especially for short area. Medium, medium middle is the worst one with three interceptions, only two touchdowns. Great, great year, uh, all over the place a little bit in those two games. So let's quickly check out the league leaders before finishing up the episode. Everson coming up just shy of the top 10 in terms of passing yards, passing touchdowns. He's once again top five, but Mark Ricker. Wow. Ooh, how is he able to produce 5,500 yards and 44 touchdowns? Is it really only the intelligence? I don't know. That's crazy. He's going to be a free agent, so that is a name worth noting if the Rams are not planning to sign him back. Wow, he's going to be MVP for sure. Uh, pass, uh, rushing yards, yeah, not expecting anyone from us here. Receiving yards, also no one with more than 1,100 yards. Points I don't care too much about. Kickers and in terms of tackles, Tremaine Edmonds being in the top 20. And sack wise, Brian Burns finishing 11th with 13 sacks on the year. So that's his uh, best season so far for us finally producing at least a little bit. Also being the most expensive uh, on his contract right now. Aiden Hutchinson, not what I hope for. And interception wise, uh, no one in here. But I remember that Derek Stingley also has uh, four interceptions. No, does he not? Samuel Sierra with three. Then maybe Derek Stingley also with three. Mark De Silva leading the team, actually. Did I miss him or he's just uh, shy of the top 20? So decent. Decent first season for our rookie wide receiver. Hope for a little bit more touchdowns, but in terms of yards, he really helped us, especially as a deep threat here with a plus 20 and plus 40. No fumbles. That's that's good. So awesome pick. Awesome offense overall. Really happy with the total stats we're seeing here and especially also with the defense Despite not putting up the sack numbers, we're uh, going to look at the total team stats uh, in more detail in case um, we lose in the playoffs. Uh, but for now, in terms of total yards, more than happy. Uh, best rushing defense and uh, second best defense in points allowed. With that said, that was uh, one of the better seasons we had. 13 and 4 Really excited for the playoffs. Let's hope that we can make a run and uh, conquer the NFL with our offense and Noberto Everson. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.